To explore the concepts of conformational analysis, let's start with a simple molecule, ethane. Conformations or rotomers of acyclic compounds are different arrangements of atoms due to free rotation between carbon-carbon sigma bonds. Again, these conformers are very important because they can dictate the products of a chemical reaction. Here we see the staggered and eclipsed conformations for ethane. The difference in relative energy between these two conformations is approximately 3 kcals per mole. Remember, atoms want to be as far apart from each other as possible. Think of it as less crowding. When molecules are viewed down the carbon-carbon sigma bond, we call this a Newman projection. Often, you may see your instructor represent the staggered and eclipsed Newman projections on the whiteboard as shown. It is important that the student makes the connection between the 2D whiteboard and the molecule in 3D. When we replace one of the hydrogen atoms with an atom that has a larger atomic radius than hydrogen, steric factors will arise, which will further increase the 3 kcal per mole barrier of rotation. When we graph the relative stabilities of these rotomers, the x-axis is designated the dihedral angle which is simply the angle indicated between four atoms, which is 60 degrees in this example. As the dihedral angle changes, so will the relative stability of the molecule, which is indicated on the y-axis. In the next example, we will replace two of the hydrogen atoms with methyl groups to afford N-butane. As with the previous example, free rotation about all the carbon-carbon sigma bonds can occur. In fact, they are all happening simultaneously. However, in this example, we will focus solely on looking down the sigma bond between carbon-2 and carbon-3 which will give rise to the following four Newman projections. The lowest energy staggered rotomer is called the anti-conformation, where all groups are as far apart from each other as possible. After a 60 degree dihedral angle change, the eclipse conformation occurs. After another 60 degree dihedral angle change, a new type of staggered conformation occurs, called the gauche conformer. When another 60 degree rotation occurs, a new type of eclipse conformer is formed, called the syn conformation, which is the highest energy conformer, due to both methyl groups attempting to occupy the same space. If we place the electron density around each hydrogen atom of the methyl groups, this high-energy steric effect is clearly visible. Again, it is important that the student make the connection between the two-dimensional whiteboard and the three-dimensional molecule. As the dihedral angle changes, so will the relative stability of the molecule, which is graphed above. Now let's examine conformations involving the cyclohexane ring, which is a commonly encountered ring system in the study of organic chemistry. From the two-dimensional Lewis structure, it would appear that the internal bond angle for all carbon-carbon bonds is 120 degrees. However, all carbons are sp3 within the cyclohexane ring system. Thus, the ideal angle for each carbon should be 109.5 degrees. The 109.5 degree ideal angle is accomplished by folding the molecule into three dimensions as shown. The ring is puckered out of the plane. Carbons 1, 3, and 5 are above the plane, and carbons 2, 4, and 6 are below the plane to obtain the necessary 109.5 degree ideal bond angles. Adding the hydrogens to cyclohexane so all the bonds are 109.5 
affords the final structure called the chair conformation, which is low in energy due to all Newman projections representing a staggered-like conformation called gauche due to the dihedral angle of 60 degrees between both ring carbons. Your instructor will represent the chair conformation on the whiteboard as shown. Notice that when drawing the chair, opposite bonds within the ring are parallel to each other. Notice that the equatorial bonds all form 109.5 degree angles with the axial bond on the same carbon. In addition, there are six parallel axial positions on each carbon of the ring alternating up and down. And there are six equatorial positions around the ring, which adopt their names due to similar terms found on a globe. When we imagine someone lounging on the ring, it is easy to see why this low energy conformation for the cyclohexane ring is called the chair conformation. All molecules are in constant motion and the chair conformation of cyclohexane is no different. Here we see the chair convert to a boat conformation and then to the other chair. Your instructor will often call these conformational changes chair inversion or chair flip. There are two very important outcomes of this chair or ring inversion. First, notice that axial groups become equatorial and the equatorial groups become axial. Second, if a group was up, it still remains up relative to the other group labeled down which is also attached to the same carbon atom. It is worth your efforts to master drawing pairs of chairs. These concepts are further demonstrated when we examine the two conformations of methyl cyclohexane, which your instructor will represent on the board as shown. Notice when methyl cyclohexane undergoes chair inversion, the methyl groups start out axial and then become equatorial and the methyl group is still up relative to the hydrogen on that carbon for both chair conformations. Now let's examine the relative stability of the methyl cyclohexane ring system for each chair conformer. When the methyl group is in the axial position, two 1,3 diaxial steric interactions arise, which destabilizes the molecule, making it higher in energy. It may help to see the steric interaction better when we place the electron density around each hydrogen atom of the methyl group and the two axial hydrogens on the ring. Note, there are no 1,3 diaxial steric interactions when the methyl group is in an equatorial position. Thus, the methyl group will prefer the equatorial position and this will be the lowest energy conformer. In addition, when we examine the Newman projections for each conformer, we see that the methyl group is anti to one of the ring carbons when the methyl group is equatorial. However, when the methyl group is in the axial conformation, one of the ring carbons is gauche, which is higher in energy than the anti-conformer. Now let's deduce which chair conformation is the lower energy conformer when a cyclohexane ring has multiple substituents, such as cis-1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. First, the student should draw a chair, add the substituents in the proper positions to the ring, keeping in mind that wedges represent the group up relative to the other group attached to the ring carbon, which is a hydrogen atom for both. Once one of the chairs is drawn, have it undergo chair inversion. Notice both methyl groups start out axial and then both become equatorial. And the methyl group is still up relative to the hydrogen on both carbons. As we demonstrated in the previous example, the methyl group is unstable in the axial position 
due to gauche relations with ring carbons. However, now there is an additional destabilizing effect, a 1,3-diaxial methylsteric strain. Thus, the diequatorial conformer will be more stable and lower in energy.